Good morning, and welcome to today's special announcement concerning Capital University's next president. Please welcome the Reverend Catherine Kleinhans, Dean of Trinity Lutheran Seminary at Capital University for the invocation. Good morning. First, I bring you greetings from University Pastor Drew Tucker, who would have liked to be with us this morning but had previously scheduled commitments. Now, I invite you into a moment of prayer. Holy One, be present with us as we gather here today to further the mission of Capital University. Bless our speaking and our hearing and our fellowship as we are present with one another and strengthen us for the work to which you have called us. Amen. And now, please welcome Andre Porter, a graduate of the class of 2002 and chair of the Capital University Board of Trustees. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, and thank you all uh, to our students, our faculty, our staff, our alumni, community leaders, and many friends gathered all around here this morning. It's so good to see all of you. We have members of the Capital family joining us, of course, here in person and from far via our live stream, and I'd like to welcome all of you. There are a few guests who I'd like to recognize and thank for their support of Capital, of course. I think Nan Kaufman is in the crowd somewhere. Nan, where are you? Could you wave to everyone? You guys all see her in the back here. Let's welcome Nan, please, and thank you for being here. We have the Reverend Suzanne Dillahunt, a past trustee of Capital University and uh, current bishop of the Southern Ohio Synod of the ELCA, who's here as well. Past trustees who have traveled along this journey uh, with us as well. There are several of you, including Marty Taylor, our vice chair, here in the audience today. I'd like to give a special recognition to Bob Weiler, who I see standing in the back uh, of the audience today. Everyone welcome Bob. Bob is the former uh, chair of the Capital Board of Trustees, and he and Missy, of course, who's resting in heaven, made a special gift several years ago to develop this entire space that we're standing in. Today's a special day, of course, for Capital University. In 2020, this university confronted significant headwinds. While we were planning the search for a new president, the global pandemic created challenges that we had never experienced before as a university. We suspended the national presidential search after the pandemic and other issues made it difficult for our community to gather in person and to fully assess candidates. While the, with the suspended search, the board selected an exceptional local business leader and Dave Kaufman to serve as our interim president. David led Encova Insurance as its CEO and considering the unprecedented operational and funding issues last year through the pandemic, we felt that engaging an outside leader like Dave with such strong operational experience and high business acumen and strong ties to the Columbus community was a wise choice. And as a result, and with the collective efforts of our students, of course our faculty, our staff, and Dave, we are turning the corner at Capital University, and I'm significantly pleased to announce that today. We're seeing exciting new initiatives on campus like the Indigo program, like the new academic programs in the Masters of Social Work. Student learning has continued in person and remotely. We're making headway in raising the bar on paying our wonderful faculty and staff more competitively. And we're doing all of this in a fiscally sound way with a balanced budget. And a balanced budget is the commitment of our university moving forward. However, the headwinds will continue and we cannot stop the momentum here. It's become increasingly difficult and competitive to recruit the high caliber classes that Capital University is accustomed to. The underlying foundation of our operational model must evolve in order for Capital to thrive in this decade and beyond. Considering all these challenges, the opportunity in Capital, however, remains stronger than it ever has been. Over the last year, Dave proved time and time again that he was the right person to lead this university helping to return us to financial stability, guiding us through the pandemic, helping us to rebuild our resource base, and yes, keeping us focused on student success, rebuilding trust among all of our constituencies. He built and relied on a strong cabinet of academic and higher educational professionals, 
He's demonstrated his ability to develop forward-thinking initiatives to position this university. Dave has listened, and perhaps I think it's one of the most, one of the skill sets that I value in Dave most is his ability to listen, and to listen with intent. He's listened to our faculty, he's listened to the staff, and has moved aggressively to address their concerns. Students will soon be back on campus. I know there are a few students here today, but they'll have a chance to meet person, Dave in person as well and to see exactly what we're talking about today. Dave has empowered the campus community to address the issues of diversity and inclusion and to do so head on. Dave, of course, as you all know, is not a traditional choice to be president. He does not come from higher education. The board acknowledges Dave's background having led Encova as its CEO and having served as the interim president for Capital University, however, as an opportunity for capital. We're very mindful that he does not come from higher education when making this choice. We know that those were some of the most pressing questions and concerns as we made the decision. And as I scan this audience, I see the faces of some of the most accomplished academic professionals around. I'm confident that with your leadership, working with Dave, that we will continue our focus on excellent academic teaching and learning under your leadership and collaboration. Dave has demonstrated that he is here to support all of you, to help position you, and to help reposition this university to thrive in the competitive higher education marketplace, both today and for tomorrow. What I was most pleased with over this past year was the ability of this community to keep student success as your top priority. Dave's record demonstrates that his focus will be on continuing to support faculty, staff, and administrators in making student success the top priority at Capitol. And for all of these reasons, for all of you today, I am significantly pleased to announce that Dave Kaufman has been selected as the 17th pre president at Capitol University. Please join me in congratulating Dave. And now, before we hear from Dave, there are a few others who would like to offer their congratulations. Please welcome Dr. Jim Whiteman, Dean of the School of Education and Chair of the University Faculty Executive Committee. Thank you. President Kaufman, congratulations on your appointment as the 17th President of Capital University. Mrs. Kaufman, how'd that retirement thing go for your husband? To the Kaufman family, thank you for watching today and for sharing Dave with us. Dave, as you and I discussed just over a week ago, the removing of the interim title will have significant implications for many aspects of the university. As the chair of the University Faculty Executive Committee, during this past year, I want to thank you for returning employee voice to the President's Cabinet and the moves that have been made toward a shared governance model. Your collaborative work with the leadership of Capital's AAUP chapter to bring changes to the university bylaws demonstrated that working together, we can bring positive change to the university. As you have acknowledged, and as Mr. Porter talked about, you have come to the presidency in a non-traditional manner with a corporate background According to the American Council on Education, 15% of college presidents come to the position from outside higher education. We appreciate how you've sought counsel throughout the year, helping you to understand the, the nuances of higher education while sharing the expertise you developed during your career in the corporate world. We have many challenges moving forward. The 21-22 academic year appears poised to be another roller coaster year as all of us have been experiencing since 2020. Many difficult decisions lie ahead. The faculty of the university stand ready to work with you and the university administration to continue to move capital on a positive trajectory. Again, congratulations and best wishes for a very successful presidency. Please welcome Kim Ebrecht, a graduate of the class of 1989 and president of the Alumni Advisory Board. Good morning. 
I want to also add my congratulations to President Kaufman and his wife and family. Uh, when I was a student here at Capitol in 1987, uh, Josiah Blackmore was named president. And I was part of a student group that helped with his inauguration. And I remember asking him what was he looking forward to the most as president. And of course, he had a list of things. But one of them that he said was that he was looking forward to getting to know the alumni and getting to hear their stories. And the stories about while they were a student at Capitol, but also the stories about how their foundation at Capitol paved the way for where they are today. And as I've said during the pandemic in, in different formats, we've learned quickly that our alumni were very instrumental in the pandemic. They were contributors within our community and helping people. And as I've gotten to know President Kaufman, I see him as somebody who is very, very interested in getting to know people, getting to hear their stories, and wanting to know how capital can be a better place. And so I know on behalf of the Alumni Advisory Board, on, on behalf of the Alumni Engagement Office, you have 45,000 plus people that are ready to help you and help create a, a future that's filled with great hope and great promise for Capital University. So congratulations, President Kaufman. Please welcome Kenny McDonald, President and Chief Economic Officer of One Columbus. Well, let me first say uh, congratulations, President Kaufman. Um, and I'd actually like to start in uh, congratulating the institution itself. Capital University is a integral part of the greater Columbus community. Your students, your faculty, your alumni uh, populate leadership positions in our companies and our institutions throughout the city and in, in uh, Ohio. Uh, you've made an excellent choice today. Um, second, um, I would like to say I, I first met Dave uh, a decade ago uh, as a uh, member of the Motorist team uh, and then as president and CEO uh, of Motorist uh, who steered the ship uh, through some very interesting times. I can tell you that you've got a, a, a phenomenal leader um, that has uh, weathered storms but also is a uh, person who puts people first in everything that they do. I see uh, many of his former colleagues uh, now from Encova here today, uh, which is a testament to his, his leadership there. Um, finally, let me just let me just say that it, it's very important to have um, uh, leaders now in every position in our community. Uh, as I said before, this university is very integral to our success as we move Columbus forward uh, through some very challenging times, maybe even historic times. And so, whether you refer to President Kaufman as a business leader, a civic leader, uh, or an academic leader now, uh, most important word is leader, uh, that he's going to be engaged uh, not only here with the students and faculty and the alumni, um, but throughout the greater Columbus community in a, in a bunch of different ways. And I appreciate uh, Dave always staying at the table. I've talked to him many times during the, the pandemic. Uh, it's just been uh, an incredible ride. I know that uh, great things are in the future. And there has never been a more important time for our academic institutions to have uh, partnerships with our employers uh, and our institutions as the workforce academic partnership is, is critical to our future. So no further ado, let me just uh, once again say uh, congratulations to both Capital University uh, and to President Kaufman himself. Wonderful. Uh, thanks, Kenny, Kim, Dr. Whiteman. Uh, your voices, of course, representing the Columbus, Ohio community, our uh, wonderful alumni and our faculty, uh, represent the most significant uh, voices of, as well as our students, of course. So we thank you each uh, for being here today. Everyone, uh, one more time, please join me in congratulating and welcoming President Dave Kaufman. Thank you. I'm humbled and honored to be standing here this morning as the 17th president of Capital University. 
As I look back on my life and career, never could I have imagined today. I recognize this as a rare opportunity and calling to serve and contribute to something special and much larger than myself. I want to begin by thanking Andre and the, the Board of Trustees for the opportunity to follow in the footsteps of the previous 16 presidents, all of whom wanted nothing more than to ensure Capital University students received a life-changing education. I greatly value the confidence and trust you've placed in me. I want to thank our faculty for accepting and welcoming me a year ago as a non-traditional interim president, but someone willing to partner with you to continue the legacy of this great university. Your loyalty to this institution and commitment to our students is what makes Capital so special. I've watched you make personal sacrifices so that you can leave a significant impact on each student placed in our care. I greatly value the leadership of our executive team and the teamwork demonstrated by an exceptional staff. Faced with unprecedented challenges and conditions, you demonstrated creativity and teamwork that were unmatched. It's an honor to work side by side with you to pursue our mission and transform lives through higher education. It's been a pleasure to meet many alumni over the past year who've shared their heartfelt stories of what it means to be CAPFAM. It's a special community of lifelong learners who give back by paying it forward. Thank you for your support. Most of all, I want to thank our students who've welcomed me so warmly. You've shared me your joys, experiences, concerns, and hopes. And I tell you, your discipline, drive, and creativity over this past year have inspired our entire community. And finally, I want to thank my friends and family for their support and encouragement. I wouldn't be the person I am today without your influence on my life. I would like to especially thank Nan for her love and support as we take this next step together. Thank you. I'd like to take a moment to reflect on this past year. As you might imagine, given the pandemic conditions and social unrest, it was a year of unique challenges and unplanned accomplishments. My goal of knowing every student, faculty, and staff member by name was complicated by COVID mandates of masks and social distancing. There are still trustees, faculty, and staff, and students who I still know only as a two-inch square on my, on my Zoom screen. This past year in academia and on campus was like no other. For one, we didn't get to experience the traditional gate ceremony. For our incoming students did not get the customary celebration of officially walking through the gate and onto campus for the first time as a student. Similarly, our graduates did not experience the traditional celebration of walking out the gate and into the next chapter of their lives. I'm excited for these traditions to return. We didn't have the opportunity to sit in Bernler Stadium and cheer for our athletic teams. Our experience and the magnificent sounds of the holidays reverberating through Mies Hall during the Christmas festival. Or shake hands with graduates as they walk across the stage to receive their well-deserved diplomas. But despite the hardships brought by the pandemic, I saw firsthand the transforming learning for which capital is known and what I want to be a part of. I participated virtually in the 30th annual Martin Luther King Jr. Day of Learning. I was taken aback by the level of engagement and how professionally the event was done. It was a day that inspired reflection, hope, and action. I watched our students present their research projects with pride of being part of a community of intellectual and creative connections. They demonstrated how research and experiential learning play a powerful part in our educational experience. I saw our faculty develop virtual learning opportunities and create innovative ways to build relationships with their remote students, relationships that have been at the heart 
of a capital university education since its founding. I witnessed the creativity of our student and community engagement staff as they modified engagement activities to deliver an outstanding campus experience during the pandemic conditions. I also saw our staff demonstrate superior teamwork and respond to daily challenges to simply do what needed to be done, whether that was holding virtual recruitment events, keeping the grass cut and the flowers blooming, working with individual families to make a capital education affordable, taking care of students in quarantine, or walking the beat to keep our campus safe. Through these unprecedented times and unheard of challenges, we persevered. I learned what a special place Capital University is and experienced what it means to be part of the Capital family. On May 21st, 1850, 1850, the Reverend W.M. Reynolds, the university's first president, spoke about the impact of a Capital education with words and ideas that remain true today. Reynolds said, what, after all, is education? And what is it that it proposes to accomplish? There must be found and developed in man a certain character, a certain state of the heart, as well as the head, certain dispositions of love and goodwill to men, and an abiding sense of duty. When we speak of educating our children, we mean not only their literary instruction, but also their preparation for the discharge of the duties of life by the formation and development of such character as they ought to have as intelligent and moral beings. Today, 171 years later, Capital's primary goal remains unchanged. Our mission is to transform lives through higher education. We remain committed to the holistic education of each student whether they learn virtually or in person, on the main Bexley campus, at Trinity Lutheran Seminary, or downtown Columbus at the law school. We will build on our many strengths to fulfill Capital's mission and pursue Reynolds' original vision of the university. In considering how we move forward, I'd like to share some expectations. First and foremost, everything we do will support student success and deliver a superior student experience through academic challenge, personal development, and social engagement. From providing every undergraduate student with an iPad to help ensure equal access to education, to expanding academic support, campus services, and student success programs, we will ensure that each student has what they need to realize their educational goals. Our faculty will remain our strength. We will invest in them as true teacher scholars whose research advances the sum of human knowledge and informs their teaching. We will continue to support a faculty whose commitment to students is fundamental to their intellectual and professional lives. A key to our success will be superior teamwork and integrated support across all our business functions and campus locations will provide a positive learning culture and career growth opportunities. Our faculty and staff will trust each other and be bound together by shared values and a common mission. Our alumni form an international network of support for our students through all their career transitions. There's a sense of family, a family that generously gives back by donating their time, talent, and money to support current students and the university's mission. We will expand our alumni mentoring and support programs to more effectively connect our future with our storied past. We will also remain a responsible, good, and caring neighbor. For causes that align with our mission, we'll not only get involved, but assume a leadership role and make a lasting difference. Capital will be recognized broadly as a leader in higher education and a trusted community partner. The university will continue to offer the benefits of the Lutheran expression of higher education to everyone. Diversity, equity, and inclusion are foundational aspects of our educational programs and training methodology. Our diverse and inclusive climate will foster new opportunities, trusted partnerships, 
and effective collaboration. As I assume this leadership responsibility, my approach is to establish a foundation of trust with a clear path forward to achieve our mission and sustain operations. As a trusted leader, I will demonstrate impeccable character with integrity behind everything we do. Trust will be built through frequent, transparent communications. It may not always be what you want to hear. It will always be what you need to hear. I will ensure everyone has a voice and is heard as I continue to listen, learn, and lead. On a foundation of trust, I believe our success requires focus and strategic outcomes. In collaboration with the President's Cabinet, we've drafted a set of immediate goals to lead the university forward and start collaboration with uh, the broader community. The first is to unite the collective energy and spirit of the capital community through a collaborative development of a strategic plan, an aspirational plan that involves everyone and unites the college, seminary, and law school. Second, we will transform our business model and pursue partnership opportunities to expand enrollment, promote student learning and success, and ensure all programs and services are sustainable. The third is to establish clear accountability to implement the diversity and inclusion priorities developed and approved over this past year. The capital community will welcome all, value differing perspectives, and champion social justice. Our fourth goal is to define and promote capital's value proposition, including our Lutheran identity, to target messaging strategies and clarify our brand and extend our reach to new student populations. And finally, we'll create a trusting, collaborative culture that appropriately supports, recognizes, and compensates each individual contributor. As I accept this opportunity to serve and pursue these outcomes, my leadership style is fairly simple. You can expect me to demonstrate and ask others to commit to doing three things every day. First, to keep all my words positive with no blaming, complaining, or getting defensive. You will not find a more positive leader or accountable leadership team. The second is to learn one new thing every day. I will make mistakes, but I promise I'll learn from them. I'll strive to be better today than I was yesterday and better tomorrow than I am today. And the third is to give my best effort every day, no matter what the assignment, no matter what the challenge, I'll give my best effort and expect the best from my team. No one will outwork us. Although simple, leading by this example and creating a positive, learning, high-performing organization, it will generate the momentum needed to achieve our mission and differentiate us in a crowded marketplace. Thank you for this opportunity to contribute to something special that leaves a significant impact on those we serve. Our students, forever transformed by their capital education, will carry the knowledge and personal growth experienced on campus to make a lasting difference in the community where they live, work, and serve. A difference and impact that we will prepare them to make. I welcome this special opportunity to serve and appreciate your confidence, trust, and support. It's an honor to formally be part of the Capital family. Thank you. What a, what a wonderful uh, vision for Capital University Dave has, and I know it's been collectively uh, developed uh, with m many of you here uh, today. Uh, so I don't know. Um, well, here's, a, here's one thing that I do know. Dave was a, uh, apparently a superstar point guard. Uh, not apparently, he was a superstar point guard. I knew he played basketball at Ohio Wesleyan University. 
Uh, but someone this morning uh, reminded me of just how talented Dave was when he played basketball at Ohio Wesleyan. So we didn't get the basketball part right, so you're going to transition today. Dave, I know that you'll always be a member of the Ohio Wesleyan family, but for today you become an official part of the Cap family. Uh, so we're doing this in true baseball style. We know that you've, you're a regular attendee. Come on up, Dave. You're a regular attendee of uh, athletic program. So everyone, please welcome Dave again as an official member of the Cap family. I have to say the, the only person that thought I was a superstar point guard was my mother. <laughs> so I may be short, but I sure was slow. And now Dean Kleinholz will close with a benediction. Let us pray. creator and sustainer of the universe. We give you thanks for the many blessings the Capital University community has received through the years. Especially today, we give you thanks for the spirit of discernment that has brought us to this moment in our life together. As we move forward under the leadership of President Kaufman, bless him with the gift of your wisdom. Give all of us the eyes to recognize and affirm the gifts and skills that each person contributes to the work of Capital University, whether as student, staff, faculty, administrator, alumni, or community member. And now as we go, bless us that through our Ministry of Education, we at Capital University may be a blessing to others and to the world. Amen. Congratulations, President Kaufman, and thank you all for coming. Please enjoy the refreshments and this time for fellowship. Thank you. <laughs>